Okay, what we're going to do in this one is uh, for blueprint beginners, show you opening a door using uh, blueprints and a static mesh. I've got two here, I've got one that comes from the starter content and uh, something to be clear about that and I've got my own one which I knocked up in the modeling software and just want to show you something about that um, to make sure that it's uh, good for what we're going to do. We're going to make a swinging door so we want a hinge point on the edge of the door instead of in the middle or somewhere else offset outside the uh, door shape. So if I select it we can see we've got um, a uh, pivot point here on the bottom corner and so it's going to be hinging from this area here and uh, so it's um, important in your modeling software if I just flip to that screen that you make sure that your door object has its hinge point at the center of the world space for your modeling software whatever it is it doesn't really matter this is 3d studio max but um, the same holds true for any modeling software so look where your world space origin point is and put your uh, bottom hinge corner of your door in that point so when you export it it comes in with the pivot point in the right place okay so back to unreal um, I'm going to show you um, using this door because it's uh, easy to see what's going on the other side of it because it's glazed. Okay, so um, I'm just going to delete both of these actually, but um, there we go. So um, rather than use the door itself to create the, the blueprint, um, I'm going to create the blueprint empty you do up here and do a new empty blueprint class that's the actor type and you can choose a sensible name so it's going to be BP uh, door so it just describes what it is but make sure it's clear that it's got a blueprint origin Okay, so we have uh, here the blueprint and then its default scene route. This is the sort of main locating device, if you like, for the blueprint, for any blueprint. Okay, and I'm just going to go back to make sure that my content browser has the right door selected and go to add component and add the door. And it comes preloaded. You can put an empty static mesh in there and then find the particular one you want afterwards. It's not a problem. Okay, so that's the door in place. And because this isn't the root object, I can resize it, rescale it, and reposition it how I want. And then the next thing is to add a box collision. And this is the sort of sensory area that provides the proper trigger for opening and closing the door. Okay, so I'm just going to move around and we're going to position the trigger box just a bit offset so that you could go sort of towards the edge of the handle. and then just make it um, big enough to be usable Sure, it doesn't go through the floor. You don't want 
characters below the blueprint to be opening it as the, they go about their business on a different level um, of your virtualized building. Okay, so okay sort of size. I might uh, just scale that out a bit so it can be opening as we approach. Okay, so we've got a pivot point for this door already established. This is one of the uh, um, starter content assets that you're free to use and drop into your own work. Um, but what I do want to do is make sure this door has a couple of key aspects. So I'll go back to the door and if I double click the static mesh I can go to the static mesh editor and check out we've got this uh, box around it which says it's got a collision. If you choose the collision and you don't see this mauve purplish line uh, around your object, then you should go to collision and do something like add box simplified, which will give you just about the simplest collision object. Now, like um, trigger box, the collision is the, the thing that provides the sensitivity to intersection. So sometimes you want a, a properly solid looking object to block everything. So nothing can go through it, nothing get, can uh, uh, intersect with it. it, everything has to go past it. And the collision object provides that sort of resistance. Okay, so that's done check that the collision object is there. And the other thing is the um, trigger box. Because if you leave it with the default setting for trigger boxes, it's overlap all dynamic. Because it's a sort of see-through object, it's invisible. Uh, you don't want it blocking for certain. But uh, the, the default setting is overlap all dynamic. And any moving thing that goes into the trigger box is going to trigger the door. We don't want that. So we're going to restrain it just to um, overlap only pawn. Okay, so it's just character objects, either player characters or AI bots. Something with some sort of control mechanism attached. Okay, so that's now the um, uh, door ready for scripting and the trigger box to get it going. Okay so we hop over now to event graph and with event graph we need to uh, define some events that we can sort of trap with our script. And the event we want is if something overlaps the trigger box Okay, so uh, we set the trigger box's sensitivity to be overlap only pawn. Uh, and now we need to right click on the trig, do add event on component begin overlap. And right click again, add event on component end overlap. And now we've got the two open door and closed door conditions. Okay, so from here we drag a pin out and here's where you type in add time and you don't have to complete it until before you've got the name ready there. I'm going to call this timeline door action and then double click it to go in to set it up. Okay, we're going to have a float track which gives you values to uh, six decimal places. And I'm going to call this new track swing 90 because that sort of encodes what it does in the name. 
Okay, now to add a key, which is what we need, we're going to have two key points, one at the start and one at the end of the door swing. So I'll right click and do add key. And as you can see, up we're now we've got two settings here, one time. And that time needs to be on zero, bang on. And one value, which is also set to zero. And you hit return key to accept those additions. And I'm going to make another key for two seconds, but I'm going to lazily slot it in here at 1.5. But we can treat it so precise timing over here in the time setting. So again, click in, put your number in. I'm going to tab over to value. And value this time is 90. So we're going to make the door swing 90 degrees. OK, the value zooms off, so you just press both these without having to think about it. And there's your the graph of motion. Two seconds worth going from 0 to 90. OK, don't worry about this little 8 that slipped in here. It just does that. OK, we've got a length of 5 seconds, but if I do use last keyframe, the motion will stop at the two second point where the last keyframe is. So that suits things quite nicely. OK, so we'll finish with that for now. So now we can see the timeline. We've got this new output of uh, the value of the timeline at whatever time it's running through. So it's like a little movie clip and it's adding the uh, respective value out from the uh, graph line between 0 and 90 as it goes along. OK, so um, the next thing to do is to take that value and we need to make it into a rotation. So at the moment we've got one angle, one axis of rotation, um, but we need to make it have three axes because that's what a rotation is. So we go uh, type in make rot. It might come out as make rot in your version of um, Unreal. Make rot or make rotate, it's the same thing. Okay, now the axis we want to actually animate is not the roll because that will make the door sort of tip on its corners and the axis we want is your which is sort of spinning on a spot just as we want it to be okay and now the return value so we're going to take this value and apply it to do something and in this case it's set relative so whatever value of rotation it has at the start, the uh, timeline rotation is added and it's the door object that we are treating. If I just move that up you can see we've got this new target door object. And finally, semi-finally, we take the exec, so the update thing out of uh, the timeline and plug it into our set relative rotation. And the only thing missing now is to add into our reverse. Okay, so when you've finished doing your um, scripting and doing your viewport setup of your objects, you go to compile. Okay, I'm just going to minimise this because we might need to dodge back in. Not that I'm not supremely confident, but uh, anything can happen. And here's our blueprint. If you look here, I've got a filter set to door, so anything with the name door pops up in the content browser without me having to hunt it down. So, drag and place that in there. 
Okay, I'm in the uh, minimal default um, level, and I've just grown this base by about a factor of two. So double size now. And I've moved the uh, play start nearer the uh, viewpoint, the current viewpoint. Let's try play and see what happens. Okay, so we go up to our door, hit the trigger box, brilliant. And while we stay in there, come out, the door shuts. Back in, door opens, go through. I don't know if you just saw a little boulder thing fly off the screen then. I hit the left mouse button, which set up my uh, clay pigeon shoot. Okay, so that seems to work just fine. One of the things you'll find, if you don't do the trigger box, if you don't set the trigger box to overlap only pawn, what you might find is when the trigger box, when the uh, door swings outside the trigger box, it triggers the uh, um, door to shut itself because it's overlapping everything so fix it just for characters to overlap only pawn okay and um, the door additionally needs to have um, a collision preset or block all dynamic unless there's something you really want to just kind of go walk through closed doors a little bit of ghostly apparition other than that, here's the uh, event graph again. Okay, so that's the kind of simplest door. Um, I'm checking out whether I can do a, an extension to this and add a few sort of tweaks and uh, further refinements. Okay, um, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.